Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Taylor. If you're new here, welcome. I bought a Dell XPS 9570 off of eBay for what I assume was a good deal. We're gonna find that out. This XPS has an i7-8750H, which is a six core processor. It has 32 gigs of RAM. It has one terabyte of SSD storage, and it has a 4K panel. Back when this thing was new, it was considered the ultimate for a productivity or creative workflow, and you could get it for $2,550. That was back in 2018. I bought this particular XPS for $550 off eBay today, and we're gonna see if that was a good deal or not. We're going to unbox it. We're going to inspect the condition because I have no idea, but the listing said that it should be good. So fingers crossed that it's good. We're going to slap windows on there and test out the performance because it doesn't have an OS. It has a hard drive and it has a Windows key baked in, but no OS. So we're gonna put that on there and see how it goes. Might even put Linux on it, we'll see. And then I'm gonna show you how to get a good deal like this, assuming that it's a good deal, at the end of the video. So stick around for that. And now let's get into it. As a disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by any product you see in this video. No money changed hands. This video was completely funded by myself. So if you wanna support the channel, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and check out my Patreon down below. Thank you so much and let's get into it. First things first, let's get this little guy unboxed. The anticipation is mounting because I have no idea what to expect in this box. The lister said that it was in good condition and he included a charger. So we're gonna see what we get in here. Oh, it has a pull here. I'm gonna pull there. And now this pre-boot system performance check is done and it says the hardware is complete with no issues. So that is reassuring. You can see that. So now it's just prompting us to shut down. It says there's no bootable device. So now I'm gonna shut it down. We're gonna open up the inside and see what the inside of the laptop's hardware looks like. All right, to open this up, you're gonna need a T5 Torx screw, which I have in my iFixit kit here. So that's what we're gonna use on this to get rid of these six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws. All right, now that we have those unscrewed, there's two screws under here, which we will need to remove. There we go. There's the underside of the back plate. Looks like we have some writing there, and I did hear a creak. I'm seeing if they've got a thermal pad for our SSD. It does look like there is some grime in here so we will potentially have to clean that out got our 97 watt hour battery here and we have our two sticks of ram and then we also have an ssd which looks to be a pm 981 nvme which if i remember correctly that one is pretty good and we also have a wi-fi chip here which we will pro probably replace with this guy this is the intel AX210, which has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3. This is a killer WLAN card, so that might not play nicely with Linux. Now that we've got that disassembled and we kind of see the state of things as they are when it ships, let's go ahead and get this reassembled and get Windows installed. Got the laptop set up with Windows here. I chose to go with Windows 11 just because that is the latest and I really like Windows 11. The Dell driver process is one of the best in the industry. Seriously, every manufacturer should take note because it's just so simple. It auto detects your computer, downloads all the drivers, including BIOS updates, and the whole thing is just really seamless. It works really well on this laptop. And I got the fingerprint installed. So just put my finger on that logs right into the system. And first thing, I wanna talk about this screen. This is the 4K panel. It is not OLED, it is IPS. And oh my goodness, this screen is phenomenal. I don't think I've ever seen an IPS screen this good. And 4K at 15.6 inches, ooh, it's crisp. It looks good. I think this is the best screen I've ever seen, hands down. But I wanted to look first thing, we have the crystal disc mark 
here. This is the Samsung PM981 drive. And here is the scores here. We're getting a, 15, a, a 1456 read and a 2371 write, which is not bad. It's not great, not as good as the MacBook Pro, but it's pretty good. All right, next let's load up some games and see how they perform. These games are gonna be run before I do the cleaning process on this laptop, so it is still filled with all that stuff that it has since this laptop was first used. We're gonna clean all that and do a benchmark after, but for now, let's run the game benchmark as it is. First game is Overwatch, just jumping in here in the practice match, and I've left it running for a bit. We're getting a solid 60 frames per second. The 8758s, is at 82 degrees Celsius and we're at 27 watts. And the 1050 Ti Max Q, it is, there is no information available for it, but it has a temperature of 72 degrees Celsius, which isn't bad. And the game is running at 1080p. All games that I'm gonna show are running at 1080p. So I would say that Overwatch is pretty playable here at this 60 frames per second. Next game we have here is Grand Theft Auto 5, and we are getting a solid 60 frames per second at 1080p here. I have settings at about all medium, 1080p, and this is looking pretty playable. Our, our CPU temperature is getting pretty up there. I think I saw it hit 99 degrees Celsius at one point, so it will definitely heat up that processor and you can hear it in the fans. Pretty much anything you do intensive on this 9570 is gonna ramp up those fans. And ooh, we're dropping frames. All right, so at some points it's playable. We're getting between 15 and 30 frames per second. It seems the more we play it and the more the laptop heats up, then uh, we get a little bit less, so about 19 to 60 frames per second, I'd say. That's a pretty wide gamut. So uh, I would say GTA 5 playability is, um, your mileage may vary. It kind of just depends. Yeah, you could also try lowering the settings even more if you wanted to, to get more stable frame rates. Let's go ahead and jump into the next game. Now let's look at Spider-Man. This is the Spider-Man Remastered. I have it at 1080p. There is no upscaling or AMD FSR enabled and all settings are low. And this game is just really demanding. Even on this 1050 Ti Max Q, at these low settings, I'm getting about 30 frames per second, maybe even lower. Oh, I just hit 40. But yeah, this game will really tax this thing and I would say it's it's playable, but it's not gonna be as enjoyable as something that was a solid 60 frames per second. So you might have to do a lot of tweaking on these settings, maybe push them even lower. But um, yeah, this one is kind of rough. Got Counter-Strike loaded up here. Again, we're running at 1080p. I'm just in a free fall game here. About all medium settings, and we're getting anywhere between 80 and 100 frames per second. So I would say that Counter-Strike Global Offensive is pretty playable on the 9570 with that 1050 Ti Max-Q graphics card. The last game I tried here was Modern Warfare 2 and I ran the in-game benchmark and as you can see, we have an average of 58 frames per second, which is not bad, honestly. That's pretty playable. Again, this is at 1080p and about medium settings, so I'd say 58 frames per second would be a pretty enjoyable experience for Modern Warfare 2. And that's what you can expect out of the gaming experience of a 9570 that hasn't been cleaned after it's being used. So after we get this thing cleaned up, we'll see if we have any performance improvement. Before we crack this thing open, clean it, and replace that Wi-Fi card, the killer is producing a Wi-Fi speed of 323 down and 45 up. I'm gonna swap it for that Intel AX210 and we're gonna see what speeds we get.
have it, the AX210. All right, and there's our new scores. Looks like our download is a little bit less, but our upload is significantly higher. We were at 46, now we're at 176. Right, I've been running in Overwatch here for a little bit now, and it looks like we are a couple degrees lower than we were. We were at 73 degrees on the GPU before. Now we're hovering around 70, 71. The CPU still gets pretty up there, but what I've noticed is the fans ramp up a lot less. Like they're ramping up now, and then they'll go down quiet once it, it's able to cool that CPU and GPU. So I think that repaste and cleaning alone made a big difference in terms of how those fans spin. They're not constantly spinning as much. That was a worth it cleaning and it definitely made a difference. Here is our multi-core score, 4608 after 10 minutes of Cinemage R23, which puts us right behind the 11th gen 1165G7. Here is the OpenCL score for the 1050Ti Max-Q. So we saw some gaming, but honestly the XPS line isn't really geared towards gaming. It has a 1050Ti Max-Q graphics card, which isn't the most powerful. So gaming is not really the expectation here, but what is a good expectation is productivity. This is a productivity workstation. So we have DaVinci Resolve loaded up here. I made a short film, edit it, on 4K 10-bit 422 footage, and this handled it pretty well. I had to change the render quality down to quarter size, quarter render, to get a smoother playback. If you do the full render on playback, is going to be a little choppy. And this was a minute and 28 seconds long, and it rendered it in a minute and 17 seconds in that. 1050 Ti Max-Q graphics card really helped out in that department speed up that render. So I would say that is really, really good. 4K 10-bit 422 footage is some of the most intense footage that you can have and be editing with for videos. And the fact that this laptop was able to handle it after some tweaks is very impressive, especially for a laptop of this age. This is great for editing YouTube videos. In terms of photo editing, this is gonna handle it just fine. Lightroom isn't a very intensive program. It doesn't take a lot of horsepower to edit photos, and this laptop can handle it absolutely fine. Let's talk about software development. Ooh, software development is a treat on this laptop. I have IntelliJ open here. I created a tiny spring application and it builds really fast. The text is super sharp with that 4K resolution. Everything is very speedy. The IDE is speedy. Developing software on this is a joy. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you and congratulations. <laughs> Hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. But now you've arrived at the Linux section. Yes, we've covered Windows. We've looked inside this laptop. We've cleaned it and made it pristine. And now we are to Linux. So why is Linux such a big deal on the XPS? Well, because Linux is very popular amongst IT professionals and software engineers and database engineers. And there really hasn't been a whole lot of Linux support in mainstream laptops. And the Dell XPS was really the first laptop that was geared towards professionals that offered professional level Linux support, specifically with Ubuntu. I just downloaded the latest LTS version of Ubuntu, which is 22.04, I think. And here we are. It installed flawlessly, instantly. It supported the GPT partition. I re-enabled the Eufy BIOS and disabled legacy support, and it just loved it. It installed it immediately. It even gave it a custom boot animation when it booted, so it shows Ubuntu. It ingrains the, the Dell Incorporated XPS 9570 in the actual settings. It recognizes everything, down to the graphics card, the Wi-Fi card. It picked up every single driver and it works flawlessly. And I'm gonna show you just how flawlessly it installed the drivers by plugging in the Apple Studio display to the XPS and we're gonna see just what happens. Look at that. Look at that. That 
is Linux on the Apple Studio display. And guys, I have seen a lot of YouTube videos on the Apple Studio display, and I have never seen anyone put Ubuntu on the Apple Studio display. There it is. Ubuntu is on the Apple Studio display, and this XPS supports it without any problems at all. How incredible is that? So I've owned the Dell XPS for about five days now, and I've been using it through those five days, and I've just now encountered an issue, and it's a pretty big one. So all the time I've been doing my footage and filming on this laptop and using it, I've mainly been using it plugged in. And recently I've been using it unplugged, just carrying it around, using it as a laptop really without the power. And I discovered that around 50% battery life it will just drain to 1% just immediately. And if I plug it back in, it goes back up to 50-ish percent. So that indicates to me that there was a battery issue. I went in and I reseated the cable, making sure that it was actually connected and everything. It was, the problem was still occurring. So I have contacted the seller and requested a partial refund. So we'll see if that request gets approved. I got a battery. The seller was kind enough to offer me the option between a partial refund or a battery that they had in their inventory and I chose the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing installed and then we'll wrap up this video with my final thoughts on this laptop and this deal. And then I'll show you guys how you can also search for a deal like this on eBay. Hopping back into Windows here and before I get into how I went about finding this laptop on eBay, I wanna tell you guys my final thoughts on this laptop and whether or not I think that this was worth it. So like I said, this retailed for $2550 back when it was new, $2,550. I got this laptop on eBay for $550, which is $2,000 less than what it retailed for back in like 2018. So this is a pretty old laptop. And yet this video hopefully has demonstrated that this thing has a lot of power and you get the Windows Precision touchpad, a very good keyboard. This keyboard is very good. It's nice and spongy and I almost like it almost as much as the MacBook Pro keyboard. It's different, but it feels good. You also get a lot of software compatibility, good drivers. Dell has a fantastic driver system, so you should never have a problem finding drivers. You have great Linux support, especially if you install Ubuntu, because the drivers are just there. It just works out of the box. You don't have to do any of the Linux stuff that you have to do with other computers. It just, it works. The BIOS is pretty cool in this laptop. Since this is a prosumer grade laptop, it has prosumer settings in the BIOS. Like you can disable the touchscreen through the BIOS. You can disable TPM through the BIOS. You can disable things like the webcam and the wireless card all through the BIOS, which is something that only very advanced systems offer. And this offers it. And I paid $550 for this. So do I think that this was a deal or do I think that I overpaid for this? I think this was an insane deal. And if you can get something similar to this for $550 around that price, wow, that is an amazing deal. This was an amazing deal for a laptop. So what I did to find this deal is first go to ebay.com, step number one. Next is I just typed in Dell XPS and I typed in 4K. I knew I wanted the 4K screen, so I just went out of the box and went with that as my first search criteria. Then I just selected 16 and 32 gigs of RAM because I know that that's the RAM configurations that I want. And I didn't bother with processor, none of this. I went down to used and then I went down to buy it now because I, I don't want to fool with auctions. I just want to do buy it now. And then I also selected a max of $600. So now we only get results that are under that. And now we have a much narrowed result set here that we can see for all the XPSs available that fit that criteria. And then 
I usually sort by um, ending soonest first, or actually no, I sort, I sort by newly listed. So these are new deals. You can usually find some good ones here because people are just throwing them up. And sometimes there's some, some real winners here. Like here's a 9570 uh, 8750 H4, $529, 4K. Uh, it, this has 16 gigs less than my model, but $529, that's around the price point. But what I'll also do is I'll do uh, Command F or Control F if you're on Windows to find. So I'll search for watchers, which is really nice because that means I can let other people do the, the deal hunting for me because usually the watchers are pretty keyed in to the deals. So you can just kind of like search for that and see here like this is a 9570 for 499. So we're already the same specs as the top one. We're already less than that. So we've already found a better deal and we can just kind of hit enter and cycle through these and just look at each one and see which one fits the criteria that we want and has the best deal. So you can use this method to search for uh, whatever hardware you want on eBay. It works pretty well. And that's how I found the deal on this XPS. And there you have it. That's how I found the deal. And now we've seen what this XPS 9570 is capable of. I hope you guys enjoyed. I liked this laptop so much that I actually got another one. But this is no XPS. This is something special entirely on its own. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to see what this is about. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.